Dave Vess, the underworld's favorite new scoundrel. Wars Outlaws. Uh, as you guys are watching this, this is our clip out version of this. You can check out the full podcast on Thursday when it releases, but um star wars outlaws phil let's just share our score real fast you go with yours i'll go with mine and then give us a little bit of detail about the game like the story it wise what it's about and then we'll review it and then tyler will of course ask us some questions okay so uh right now my review score is sitting at a six out of ten perfect um as far as the story goes it follows k vess She's kind of been like a growing up thief she lives in what is a canto bite is that what canto it's called bite, yep. yeah the canto planet bite. from last jedi with the horse racing. Oh. Mm -hmm. So she she grows up there. Uh, th she was supposed to do like a really big score. score. It doesn't turn out the way that she wanted to. And now she's in this confinement where she's not only in trouble from the place that she tried to heist from, but she also has a death mark upon her. And it's about her just trying to wash herself of that, figure out what's going on, and also just try to get that big score yeah. too. And that's what I was about to say. In the end of the day, it's about pulling off the biggest heist in the galaxy. Yeah. Um, Sounds so, very similar to Star Wars thirteen thirteen. In a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, so for me, my score, and this is so far, guys, we have not beaten the story yet. It is a very long game. Very There's long. a lot of stuff to do um, where I'll start being like, okay, I'm just going to push through the story, and then it's like, shit, now I want to do like these 30 other things to the side. Yeah, we both have, what, 15 hours logged in? 15, I'm thinking so. about 16, 17. Um. So right now my score is an eight out of ten. Uh, I really, really like this game, and that's surprising because we were talking shit about this game. Yeah, I was talking couple, mad shit about yeah, this game about, about <laughs> like a couple podcasts ago. And for me, so the reason I'm really a fan of it, and just like my first impressions is, a lot of people were hyping this as Grand Theft Auto in Star Wars universe. And yeah, to a certain extent, it is like you can get like what is it called an Empire like a wanted level but from the empire mm -hmm. and like they send death troopers if you're like on the highest mount of it like oh, it, like it's cool but for me this is actually more of uncharted it's uncharted open world in the star wars universe and once i put it into perspective that that is what it is that's when i started liking the game more now the developers of this have made division one and two and they know how to craft an open world and I will say for the most part, I'm always interested. The worlds, and it, feel free to disagree with me if I'm wrong, or if you disagree, the worlds feel so fleshed out and so well done. Th there's so many people walking around, specifically in the towns. I always find myself interested to like see like just mm -hmm. little interactions. And I've found myself where I'm just walking through and say I start talking to a merchant, all of a sudden the these stormtroopers come up and start harassing him. And I had the opportunity to A, shoot them and kill them and get a wanted level B get a uh, pay them off and bribe them to leave or C tell them off and probably get arrested. I chose uh, shooting them. Mm. Oh, I think I know which one the yeah. market guy. Yeah. But yeah. I've had multiple times where something like that, where someone else walks up and tries to, and it's those little things that make you feel like you are actually in this world. It's that immersive. There's immersive breaking stuff. And we'll talk yeah. about that in the issues, but the fact that it can sell me, and, and this is what really, I do not have time to play video games. I do not have time. The fact that I've been wanting to go back and play this, and I'm excited to see, like I'll say, the story's fine. It's okay. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in my mixed and cons. Like, it's it's whatever. But I, I like Kay. I like Kay Vess. Yeah, she's actually not a bad character. I like yeah, her Yeah, her little creature she has is named Nyx. And it's mm -hmm. fun. You can make him pickpocket people and, like, steal stuff and bring it to you. Um, he can plant traps on, like, when you're, like... Uh, going into places and the combat very well done like for, when you start upgrading your pistol because it's only one pistol and you can pick up like certain guns and like use them for a gotcha. little bit i like it like it's cool like at first i was like this is this isn't the best but once you start upgrading like it's cool like i love going into a place rolling around shooting someone making nicks at the same time attack someone while then i won't run up and start knocking someone in the face meleeing it, it's cool like I, yeah. I like it um the speeder bike's fun uh the combat in space is cool Phil, go with some of your pros as well. Anything you agree yeah. with me or? Um, I was gonna say the. I, I was pleasantly surprised because I I was really expecting for it to be a little bit less than what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, the combat feels fine for me personally. Like, I've always been about like player choice and just like having more than just one weapon to a lot of That's things. That's fair. So to me, like. 
the combat suffices for me, but to if you're going to be playing the game, it's kind of like what you experience in the first 30 minutes you're going to be doing in the 15 yeah. hour. Yeah, and, and that's and that's the one thing I will say. If you are not a fan of the, what you're doing, you may get tired of it later on. So yeah. it can be mundane. If so. Yeah, so like to me, I'm not excited about getting into a gunfight. I'm it's more to me about what I could get away with than what mm-hmm. I can actually like do. Yeah, that is actually kind of fun to like, like you're because they have a dead eye like from Red Dead. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, sometimes I'll use it and then like I'll hit them all and be like, okay, cool, I got away with it. Like no yeah. one, no one came, no alarms got sounded off. Like it, it's fairly so, cool. I give them credit to that. Um, the other. The one thing that I really do like is the reputation system. Yes, this is awesome. So, um, so you're in the underworld, which is the first big Star Wars thing to really ever dive into the underworld. Even Mandalorian doesn't really dive into this, mm-hmm. and Book of Boba Fett fucking didn't either. But uh, explain yeah. it, yeah, it's really so cool. basically the way how it works. Instead of like, because usually a lot of Ubisoft games, and I would even say like Bethesda games, they give you like different factions, mm-hmm. and it's like a thirty hour grind to max yeah. rep. This one, instead, you get three different factions to work with. It's the Huts, the Crimson Dawn, and oh, nice. the the Pikes. Yeah. So no, there's how- a fourth one. I don't know if you've gone to it. There is a fourth one. Oh, there's a fourth one. I won't one. say what it is, yeah. but there's a fourth one. But so there's these factions and the way how it works is that they play off of each other. So a lot of these contracts that you take and onboard actually kind of mess with each other. And so it's always about these cartels getting the upper hand over each other and you have to pick and choose. Mm. And as you kind of favorite one, the others will start to go down. But it makes sense. It's not like, oh, I did this random thing and decided to turn it into this guy instead. So I lost rep for everyone else. It doesn't work like that. You're like, by the, the end. yeah, the huts wants you to go over to the pikes and mess with their stuff. And if you get caught or whatever, you'll lose reputation with the pikes. But if you actually don't get caught, you won't lose rep with him. And then you'll gain rep with the interesting. And then so there's, it's cool. Yeah. And then there's other things with that where it's like, you might take on a mission for the job of the hut. And it might be like, go and steal this information from the Crimson Dawn. So you go and do it, but by the end, you have the choice to tell the Crimson Dawn, hey, I'm st- the the Huts are trying to fuck you over. And then you get... Rep- so then you end up fucking the Huts over anyways. Yeah. So it is really cool. And then with that, like, when you go to these certain planets, certain planets are, like, taken over. Like, Tatooine is obviously the Huts. Like, it's all Huts everywhere. Yeah. But, like, I'm in really bad reputation with them. So I can't go to a lot of places on Tatooine. Like I can't go to their marketplace. Like there's certain specified like black market people that you can buy special shit from that help your character grind out more and is like either better armor, or better charms and stuff to make your experience better. And every I've noticed all of them have different trinkets to what your play style is. The Crimson Dawn are more stealthy. So if you go to them and buy their stuff, it helps you with your stealth stuff. So I actually think that's actually one of the smartest things they do. Mm -hmm. And this is the other thing I'll say. When I heard this was Ubisoft, I was like, great. I'm going to be climbing towers. Yeah, climbing towers. There's going to be. It's not. There's not much. uh, Clear the outpost, climb the tower, unlock the fourth of the core of the map through your vision. Yeah. Can I actually say this? This is the, it is an Ubisoft game in the end of the day. But yeah. it is the least Ubisoft open world game that we've gotten yet. Yeah, I call it the the UB uh, formula. Yeah, but it's typical. overall it's not. It's not, and that's what I really like. Now, are some of the missions a little bit repetitive? Like, let's let's dive into some of the issues. Uh, are some of the missions a little bit repetitive? Yeah, for the most part, it's sneak in, do this, blow up this, attack this guy, and that's most open. Like when I really started thinking, I'm like, that's most open world stuff. Like, say what you will, <clears throat> Grand Theft Auto is kind of the same. Sometimes you just do more wilder shit. And I don't know if there will be wilder shit later on. I'm like, just for perspective, I am almost done with the story. And a lot of the stuff has been a little bit of the same. I would have liked a little bit more of a mission variety. Mm. But as a kickoff to this Star Wars Outlaws, it is a lot better than I expected it to be. And I don't know if like my low expectation, because I was like a little excited for it. And then like a lot more stuff started coming out. I was like, this does not look good from an enjoyment perspective. How does it compare to, because I never played it, but I know you. Oh, fallen. Sure, yeah. I'm pretty sure both of you guys have played it. Enjoyment yeah. level. Uh, I still like fallen more. Cause I'm more of a story guy. So mm-hmm. I like story stuff more, but I will say this. I like the open world more here. 
The open world in Outlaws is pretty good. Um, it's, I think it's I'm better just, than Jedi Order and stuff Yeah, like I think just like Jedi Order has like an upper hand for me in just like the gameplay aspect, like what you're doing in the gameplay loop. Just that Souls-like. It's, it's more Souls-like on that. So, so it's two different gameplay loop. It really depends on what you're thinking. But in terms of like open world and wanting to explore, I am more fascinated in exploring Outlaws than Jedi Order. I also think a lot of that is because Je Jedi Order is very much you're on your own, where Outlaws, you're literally going to a town, walking around, playing fucking Sabacc, betting, gambling. Like, you're actually able to do a lot of shit in these towns, and that's the thing that, like, wins me over in terms of an immersive level. Mm. Um, so that's a really good question. Um, any others you got for us? Um, yeah, what's, like, your biggest downfall of this game? Biggest downfall? Um... Like, what's your biggest critique? Like, what is something that they could do better? Uh, I mean, mission variety, I think, is a big thing. Um, it just really depends on how you are as a player. Mm -hmm. Because then you can say the same thing. Well, Assassin's Creed is almost the same. Yeah, that, that is true. Assassin's That's what I was going to say. But like, what you're telling thing. me, like, this sounds like Assassin's Creed esque, but again, yeah. there's like a few different things that they've added to but make it's, it. But it's it's more Uncharted, and that's more. where like I like because Uncharted kind of ha does have the same gameplay loop. I I would have liked a little bit more of a tighter story, um, in terms of like what you're doing but i also like can't say that fully because i like i don't know if there's like an emotion like there's an emotional depth to the character like you learn about her past and stuff which i like um it just hasn't like gripped me where i'm like this is like one of the best characters ever but i like her enough to, like i compare it to uncharted one story <coughs> it's really it's really entertaining it's fun i like this character enough to be like i'd go on another adventure with her yeah no, that's her where i'm at it feels like uncharted one I actually kind of like her personality. She's, Me too. Um, she's not annoying. Yeah, she's not annoying. She's just like kind of like a new up and coming thief, big trying to dream big, right? And she's like obviously doesn't know a lot of the things, but she just goes along like, oh yeah, I totally know that, or I totally yeah, totally I've done this before. But she plays it off in a way that's more like comedic, like she's new to all this. Gotcha. She's not very like self observed to no. like. Being like it's ignorance, it's coming off as like, oh, you know, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm I'm down for the ride. Yeah, when which she has really to fly cool. a ship for the first time, it's really funny. Yeah, because she's just flipping on buttons. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and yeah. like it is like when you're trying to like when you're trying to fly, it's not really the best movement the first time because it's her. You're coming mm. from her, but it doesn't really teach you what to do. You're just trying to escape. So during this whole time you're playing, obviously, like what it's about. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she takes a job didn't really work out what are you doing through this whole time that you're playing robbing people but, but what 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 is it leading up to a heist the biggest you're robbing to without getting into spoilers it's with it's you're robbing a very rich person mm. who put the death mark on her right yeah yeah so that's the that's it's the basically kind of the so she can get away and live a very good life gotcha and not have to worry about it so, um yeah Phil, what's your biggest critique? Uh, my biggest critique comes down to the gameplay, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft games kind of, uh, I'm a little bit biased about them because I've played like Division for so long, but the AI can, I feel like can be abused in some ways. And I do so agree with that, yeah. The, the combat aspects, they don't really have self-preservance. They just kind of swarm you. So if you get in a fight with like 10 stormtroopers and you try to take cover, right? They're just slowly advancing. <laughs> on you. They're just like out in the like open. impending doom. Almost yeah, kind of way. and some though are better. Yeah, because the Jabba's fucking pig dudes. Hell no, dude. Mm. They bum rush you. I had six of them, and you they don't die from your normal attack. Yeah, you have to do other things to kill them. I got stuck in a corner while six of them was bum rushing me, and I just kept like dodging and uh, yeah, everything so, like that. To me, like that's where like the biggest weak point. I don't like when like difficulty comes from the fact that like the AI's top priority is just to kill you and have like no like, like self time, yeah no self perseverance to be like at least make it more engaging you know yeah. Yeah. let them be in cover and you know it doesn't it feels, feel like they have a ton me yeah they, they just kind of just rush you and they just beat you by numbers more so exactly. than like gotcha. engaging gameplay so yeah. that's where I struggle, and that's why I said, like, when you experience the combat in the first 30 minutes, you're going to be experiencing that same kind of feeling in that loop at hour 16, hour 20, how, I'm sure. 
how does uh like the graphics and visual so that look? that was my that was one thing uh, i saw was like i saw like explosions didn't look too so great that's my like mixed that. some of it looks awesome some of it looks very hyper detailed uh the cgi cutscenes are really well done um i like the droid that she's with by the way i didn't mention oh, that the andy yeah andy's awesome he's one of my new favorite droids like automatically he's awesome but the graphics for me and we're playing without a day one patch so just know when you boot this up the same thing happened with uh f the last star wars fallen jedi the day one patch fixed <laughs> the graphics a lot on the face her the detail on her face looks weird yeah without cutscenes, and then when it goes into a cutscene, you can definitely tell like more detail stuff like yeah. that which is like most i don't know how that's going to be i don't know how it's going to mm -hmm. be six months down the road all that stuff there was a scene that i had where you have to like upgrade your biker um, yeah you get like a speed bike and you go to like a water planet so you have to go and over the get water like yeah so you have to get a part that lets you go over the water uh there's like a cutscene where she's like talking to the mechanic and their faces is like almost in a like Play Doh, yeah, yeah, and a neutral like face tone. So I'm just talking. Oh, to you his, like this. in his face, yeah, and his, his face. eyes don't blink. He's just kind of looking at you like this, and is he's talking with all these emotions, and he's just, oh, I don't know where to find all these parts. I'm doing this and that, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Whoa. So that is the biggest thing is that some of it looks great, some of it doesn't look great. The planets overall in the landscape, like when you're soaring through on your speeder, do look good. It's more of like when you're talking to someone. Yeah. It's really not the greatest, but it could be easily fixed with like, and not, and then that's not defending the studio. That's, I'm just saying like, that's, this is usually what happens with most of these is, Oh, for sure. Game there's, comes there's out and then they fix it. So, well, you also guys, you guys also have an early copy. When yeah. Is it, like, when does the game officially release? So three days early, if you bought the special edition and then I think f as this, is, as this full podcast is coming out, I think Thursday or Friday, and then as this clip out is coming out, it's later. Early on. access comes out for three days prior. So it's like what the 26th, that's something like that. Yeah. That's Monday. Oh, you can so play as early that's as Monday. So that's why the embargo is Monday. So yeah. people can play it. So. so hopefully, I mean, they get that day one. Yeah. Patch well, probably it. I, I would be pretty shocked if they don't have a day one patch on Monday. So, yeah. but I mean, overall for me, am I going to keep playing it? Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Will I play it when the add-ons come out, when the story stuff comes out later down the road? Maybe. I might, but I it's it's intrigued me enough to where I would be interested in them doing a second one, and this is usually what happens with Ubisoft games. The first game, solid, good ideas. Sequel comes out way better. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Division. Mm -hmm. uh, Division missing anything. one was really good. For yeah, the uh, first one yeah. was really good, but I, really I like the good. second one more. Person, oh, Watch Dogs, I like two a lot more than one. Um, we're not going to talk about three, but you know, um, that's how it goes. So anything else you guys want to say before we finish this up and do our rapid fire star Wars video game questions? Oh, that was actually going to be um, my question is like, start with the film. If you could create from the ground up, you can't say like, Oh, uh, old Republic from the ground up, create your own star Wars video game. How, what, how would you create it? What would it be like? I would want it because I feel like a lot of Star Wars games go around about like Jedi's and everything. And Jedi's are cool, but I've always liked the grittiness that Star Wars has always been. So I would want to do like more of a, if I could, I would do an M rated, uh, mature, like open world where you're like either a bounty hunter or you're a part of like actual crime organization. So this game. Yeah. It's just not M rated. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know what he's saying. No, I know what he's I, saying too. I mean, yeah. I said from the ground up, but also like if someone asked me that question, it would be basically what Star Wars 1313 was. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think dark uh, and gritty. I would also let like different path round choices. It would be much more like akin, a much more in-depth system of like cyberpunk's life system. That's cool. <sighs> That's yeah. what I would want. Like if you want to be a bounty hunter, fine. You know, you could either be the back in the alley hitman or you could be a mandalorian who yeah was got, raised and born to yeah, that. yeah different uh i would want them to have different kits and have them feel and play differently yeah i love that that's um, just like it want. being a net runner versus yeah. like a ninja versus yeah. a gunner that'd be cool i i 100 agree with you i think if they were able to do some kind of some way make it mature get that put it, that grittiness into it but also mm. like you said like cyberpunk style 
Yeah. yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, about you? For me, um, I'm not going to take that because that is kind of what I would want to, but I'd go a little bit different. I'm a big fan of Republic Commando. I think that game is so oh, fucking ooh. awesome. Oh. So I would want another first person Star Wars game during the Clone Wars. Doesn't have to be Republic Commando. M rated. Deep. Like Brothers in Arms. Deep Brother in Arms, like kind of shit like that. Like Army of Two type style where it's just fucking really... An Army of Two Star Wars game sounds pretty cool. That'd be yeah. That'd be Imagine cool. if you did two bounty hunters, like uh, Cat, ooh, Cad Bane and Boba Fett during the time when they were working together. That would be fucking that would be sick. Neat. That would be mm-hmm. neat. So I don't know. I'm just pitching ideas, but um, I'm gonna rapid fire with you guys to close out the review. Thank you again for watching. <coughs> for watching the review, we appreciate it. And uh, check out the full podcast when it comes out. And make sure to like and subscribe.